Hey everybody, spoilers for Spider-Man No Way Home and all things Spider-Man. Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of The Script Department. I'm John, I'm joined today by Brad to discuss Spider-Man No Way Home, which just made its home release. Uh, before we get on to that, if you haven't already, do check out our website, thescriptdepartment.net, for all the latest projects we get up to with our global network of screenwriters. Hit us up on social media, links are in the description, and subscribe to our podcast. Just search for The Script Department wherever you get your podcasts, give the video a like, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. Brad, are you a fan of Spider-Man? I am. I'm a big fan of this film. It was yeah. it's amazing. <laughs> it's such a good film. But it's yeah. not without its faults, but what is what isn't, you know? It is an amazing film. Like, you know, I've been a fan of all three Spider Men. Um I was I think I was seventeen or eighteen when, you know, Spider Man one came out and it was it just blew me away. I was like, Oh, this is a really good film. I'm a similar age to the guy in it, you know, I really related with what was going on. Um, I mean, Spider-Man 3 was a bit of a wobble and amazing, amazing Spider-Man 2. Yeah. But, you know, I've watched them all and I've, I've really, really engaged with it uh, through, throughout all the three franchises. I've always had a, a love-hate relationship with Spider-Man movies. Um, Spider-Man, always loved the Spider-Man cartoon when I was a kid. Oh, yeah. Really loved it. Yeah. Um, I was a teenager when I, mid-teens, I think, when I came to Spider-Man 1. Uh, loved it at the time, but it, it got a bit cheesy for me or and there were things about it that i didn't really like mm. uh as time went on um didn't like the green goblin as a villain really loved willem dafoe as uh as 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 a you know as osborne but didn't really buy into the idea that but well, here's this weird looking armor that we're going to sell <laughs> you know to yeah. like uh, it was just this weird kind of thing that just the, I think the the growing screenwriter inside me just was like, no, no, don't. This isn't this isn't hitting it. Even um, just making it camo green and not shiny would have worked. Yeah, <laughs> like it yeah. was, it was a luminous. You know, there's no. I guess you don't want to creep around in that armor anyway. But there's nothing military about it at all. Was there? <laughs> it was very. It's just. A, it was a very, very of its time movie. I thought. Um, but uh, Spider Man Two, I thought was. I still think to this day that holds up as a really great movie. Mm, totally. Um, and yeah, Spider-Man 3, I, yeah, I, I have no memory really of that other than lots of villains and Topher Grace's Venom, it seems. Uh, I don't know. It was, just a, it was a bit, I don't know, may not, I might not even be remembering that correctly. I think it holds a special place in the, the, the history though, doesn't it? I've just said it was a bit of a wobble, but, you know, I think they even reference it briefly in the Spider-Verse where, you know, he's like walking down the street. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey. You know, it, it is a, a bit of a, a joke in the Spider yeah. universe, but in, in, in a really loving way. The, it has, yeah. it has its place, that's for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. I don't, I have never gone back to it. And I think that, I think a lot of people ha, are, have that kind of same view of the film. But mm. I think that's, that's a conversation for another day, I think. Yeah. Uh, we can yeah. get into that one. Uh, was never big on the Andrew Garfield films. Um, yeah, they just didn't, didn't click with me. And I, would, I had kind of lost my interest in the Marvel movies. I'd kind of checked mm. out of Marvel and kind of stopped really caring about Marvel until I saw Civil War. Yes. And uh, it was, I saw Civil War. I was stuck in a hotel room. I had nothing to watch. Civil War was on, I think, or maybe it was on a streaming platform or something and maybe on mm. Netflix or something anyway. I, and I just put it on. And I was just really hooked into it. And I think that's because it's not yeah. because of Spider-Man, but I think Civil War is a great movie. But Spider-Man's appearance movie. in that just, I was like, okay, wow, let's check out the, and I think the Spider-Man movie had come out already. Spider-Man um, Homecoming had already come out at that point in, at this point um, after Civil War. But I was coming to this late because I'd kind of checked out the franchise and I watched Homecoming and it was, to me, the best Spider-Man movie. I thought this was everything I'd wanted in a Spider-Man movie. It was so great. It, it, was, every, it was, for me, one of the best superhero movies of the Marvel franchise, for me. And I just was sold. And, and that was the thing that made me go, all right, I need to really go back to Marvel again and revisit it. You know? and, and all of that, I, I do believe that that character has 
been carrying a lot of the a lot of doing a bit, been doing a lot of the heavy lifting of the Marvel franchise and doesn't get enough credit for that. Um, yeah, I, I mean, he'd to, been he'd yeah. been in so many things before, or, or in and around him having his first solo mm. movie, and yeah, he was towing the line of a lot of things. Like he was hold, he, you know, holding the thread of many many storylines, particularly like Tony Stark. Tony Stark's you know ethical compass was sort of really linked to him. I mean, he's mm. the guy that brings him in. You know, there's a really cool scene in I think it's in Civil War where it's got. Um, that old J track and they're in New York and it's all grimy. And it's like, Oh, this is a cool Spider-Man. I like this. And you know, yeah. they, they even use a tiny little bit of a video clip that is in a side story to, to Spider-Man's, you know, solo films that did probably uh, the first third of Spider-Man one with Tobey Maguire in one video clip. Mm, it's mm, like, Oh yeah, he's yeah. been saving people in a weird <clears throat> hood. And stopping trucks and things like that, and he's like, "Is this you?" He's like, "No." And then he shows him, the, "It is." <laughs> he goes, "No, I know yeah, it's you. Yeah. Don't, don't try and pretend it isn't." And it's like immediately, there's chemistry between those two in 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 the first second. You're like, "Okay, I see how Spider Man fits in here." From that point, yeah. they really thought about that. They got what was it, four films, five films? They were allowed to use him for. I think so. Yeah, yeah. So that uh, something like that with Sony, and then it, it ran out, and they went. Well, I think I, I love the fact Tom Holland had so much to do with. Getting the getting this, it back. This, what would have been his final film as Spider Man in the Marvel in the MCU, he had so much to do with it, and now they're going to make some more. He made one point six billion. It's, yeah, yeah, <laughs> they're not going to turn their back on that, are they? It did, you know, gangbusters. It was amazing in pandemic film getting that much. It's still making money now. Mm. Um, you know, the home release is only just happening, so that's going to it's going to go it's up more. more. It's going to go up more. You know, it could get in the top four up three or four you know possibly i i i know people who they weren't big on the marvel the mcu but they like iron man iron man is just a simple character they can kind of get behind they like robert Downey Jr. and they just they can plug into that right um and then they like the old spider-man films so they're thinking about watching the the tom holland ones and they ask me are they good you know, are they are they good? And I say, like, are they different? Is it like, you know, is it going to be Infinity Stones and all that kind of stuff? Like, do I need to know about all this? Yeah, you know, because Marvel yeah. does have a tendency to be a little bit inaccessible from time to time. And and I say to them, he's trained by Iron Man, mm-hmm. and they just instantly, okay, I'm in. That's it. Yeah. And they just love that idea that it's like he's the protege. He's not the guy clumsily finding his way around New York City. Yeah, we did all that. We've seen all that so many times. It's not about a guy getting bitten by a spider. We've seen that how many times. Yeah. It's just, he's just out there doing his thing and Iron Man is going to make him better. Well, they made him a little bit Iron Man as well. He gives him a a suit. I love that. (laughs) I know we're talking about a different film now. (laughs) It's a no way home. But, you know, it's the him and Ned unlock the thing and it's like they've taken their dad's car for a, spin around the block yeah. kind of thing. It's wonderful. And no, it's but like- it, it, it all ties into the idea of what No Way Home is, which is it is the culmination of this brilliant arc of him ultimately learning that with great power comes great responsibility. Something that is rushed right into the beginning of the Tobey Maguire film. It's, it takes three movies, more than that, if you consider all his other appearances. For us to get to the point where he's able to say, with great power comes great response, you know, for that to have meaning. And that's why I think it's a, that's, yeah, that's why I've been kind of dwelling on the other films as well here, because it's such a brilliant series, a brilliant yeah. arc overall. Well, I think it's, obviously they could only think so far ahead with the, mm. the Sony uh, contract coming expiring, but they still worked on it. They still worked mm. on the arc and they didn't immediately cover him in you know tragedy yeah they didn't they didn't do that the other two lost uncle ben they they you know he lost uh, amazing spider-man lost gwen stacy um uh peter parker and uh, you know toby Maguire has to leave uh, mj so she doesn't die you know there's mm. all of these tragedies well there's more than that there's all of their tragedies and mentors dying and stuff like that obviously tony died in 
um, uh, Endgame. Spoiler, sorry, <laughs> but I think everyone knows that now. Uh, yes. So Tony dies in Endgame, but it's not. He's he's not the only person holding that weight. That's a lot. Of, but the whole world is almost grieving mm. that. I know they were close, and he was a father figure, but we don't have, really have the Uncle Ben story in in uh, Tom Holland's Spider Man. Um, you know, he doesn't really have a huge amount of grief, yeah. and then all of a sudden. He's lost Tony. He's adrift. He's, you know, revealed to be, you know, he's got, he's got a Jameson finally attacking him. Mm-hmm. And then he, you know, you know, he, he has, he loses May, you know, he has this grief. He loses everything really. And it's like, okay, now, now we've done that slow arc of him being a boy at school and going through all of the things that a teenager might go through as well as being, a, a hero or a potential superhero to start with, and then we get him becoming a Spider Man. Spider Man, you know, he's not Spider Boy anymore. He's Spider Man, and it's like, okay, th- this is. I can see where they're going now, and I can, th- you know, they've almost stripped him back down. Yeah, you know, he he he's. I know I'm jumping to the end here, but it's there's so much to talk about with this film. Like he's gonna be the friendly neighborhood Spider Man again. Yeah, you know, he's not. He hasn't been. He, I know he has been to space. I know he has fought, you know, Thanos and saved the universe and all this kind of stuff. But in the history of his universe, he, he hasn't. No one knows who he is, and he's just he's the little Spider-Man guy again. He's local. Uh, it, it's not yeah. like the rest of the MCU where they're going to have to reboot it at some point. You know, yeah. the next phase is going to be a whole bunch of different Avengers. You know, they've killed off you know Stark and Captain America. And we're going to have a load of different people, but Spider Man, they've rebooted him with the same actor. And it's such a clever thing because that could have just gone away. And it's going to be a long time before Tom Holland ages out of Spider Man. Because I mean, he hasn't even pick, gone to university yet. I mean, they, they pick guys, like, though, that seem to. I know Tobey Maguire looks older, <laughs> a lot older but now. He didn't, but, but he didn't look. He's still, but he, yeah, but he he's looked He's still quite okay. boyish. He's still quite boyish. And they pick yeah. boyish boys to play yeah. this role he, no and, uh, both, yeah. none of them looked like they were they were out of their depth you know yeah it yeah, didn't yeah. look like it was it wasn't old wolverine was it like struggling to get up in the morning it was like no. yeah um let's get into the 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 plot of no way home so at the end of far from home uh uh uh, Jameson has revealed that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. We mm. pick up straight after that. And they're all trying to get away. The press are hounding them. He goes to Doctor Strange and says, uh, they can't get into ho- to college. They're, they're all, everybody, um, MJ and Ned are all um, kind of a persona non grata at, you know, in all these universities that they're applying for. And, and it has seriously affected their future now. So, uh, Peter goes to Doctor Strange and says, "Can you cast a spell that's going to fix everything? Can you make people f- make people forget that I'm Spider Man?" And and as he's doing it, he interrupts the spell. We see this in the trailer. He's like, "No, no, 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 no! Uh, like, I, I don't want MJ to forget, or I don't want Ned to forget, I don't want Aunt May to forget." And Strange keeps saying, "Stop interrupting the spell! Stop interrupting the spell!" <laughs> and then it gets carried away. It gets a bit out of control. And suddenly, all these other people who know who Peter Parker is start coming in from other dimensions and that includes Andrew Garfield, Tobey Maguire and all the other villains, Doc Ock, uh, Norman Osborn, um, what's uh, Max Dillon, I don't, what's his name? Electrode, is it? Ele- uh, Electro, yeah. Electrode. No, Electrode. Electro. 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 <laughs> because there's Shocker as well, am I right? There's like, just somebody else in the Marvel yeah. Universe called Shocker or something? Yeah, I, I mean, there's, a, there's, a, there's quite a lot. It gets a bit, it gets a bit yeah. weird, yeah. So you've got um, all these villains start piling in, and and Tobey Maguire has, or sorry, not Tobey Maguire. Tom Holland has the plan of let's try and fix them. Hmm. What did you think about that? Because that's basically the thing, isn't it? The mission yeah. isn't to kill these villains or stop these villains. It's let's try and cure these villains. So that 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 is the floppiest part of this film. Like the. It's like no, let's not send them back and kill them. Let's save these guys. It's like that. It's quite a Peter Parker thing to do. It, you know, it doesn't. It didn't feel entirely out of place, but it did feel a little bit, you know, weird. 
it didn't land right. I was like, why isn't he just sending them, sending them back? Like he's broken the universe. It's his fault. Why is he trying to change the un? He's trying. He's basically trying to change the timeline in a way. When they spent all of, he surely knew what they did in, and I know he was blipped, but surely he knew what they did in Endgame, where they had to go and fix all of these timelines, and it cost them Captain America. You know, he he and decided to live. Yeah, 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 all these people died, but no, I'm going to fix this timeline. I'm going to change this timeline so it's better. It's like, didn't you not learn your lesson? And where, and where were the Eternals, by the way, in all of this? Oh God, so, I'm not. I'm only joking. I'm not going to get into that. But uh, no, no. But you are right. I it it. I remember watching it, and we both just kind of looked at each other and said, Michaela and I just looked at each other and said, "There, this is the most naive thing any superhero has tried to do." Yeah. Um, <laughs> like you want to try and fix Doc Ock? Fine. You want to fix all of them? You think you can fix all of them and trust them? That's a bit of a strange. Yeah. Um, the idea that that was the, I had no problem with. I liked the idea that they there was this kind of noble endeavor but i didn't feel like that should have been the objective if i felt like that should have been a byproduct of some other mission that they had to do uh like maybe we got to find norman osborn because he's stolen something belonging to dr strange or whatever okay fine mm. i mean this is me making it up as i go here but and along the way i'm able to change doc ock for the better Mm-hmm. And Doc Ock changing helps us later stop Norman. Something like that. But the idea of let's stop, let's change everybody, let's make everybody better. You know, it, it, for some other universe that isn't yours, felt a little unusual. Yeah, it just felt a bit naive. It felt like yeah. there was a there was a more interesting driving objective here to be solved. And I don't. Yeah, think I think the box, yeah. the box MacGuffin was weird. You know, they could they could just slap that button and they've all gone, kind of thing. But yeah, that was the only thing I didn't understand. Maybe why, maybe uh, it should have yeah. maybe that should have accident. Maybe he didn't mean to strand Doctor Strange. Maybe that was a a, a, a battle, and he, he wasn't entirely sure about his choice. But they fought over it anyway. Maybe the box stays with Strange in in the mirror um, dimension, and it doesn't work there. So you know, he he's actually stuck with them, mm. and that's the reason he tries to fix them. Not I could send them back, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to fix them and then send them back. And it's like there does, there's a weird, there isn't a ticking clock there that really works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, you know, the, if, the, if <clears throat> what what if Strange was due back and they knew when he was coming back? In the, you know, there's a there's a deadline on what they're doing. It just felt a bit. I don't know that yeah. that was one of the only bits that I was a bit like, oh, why are they doing that? And then throughout all the scenes where they're in May's apartment and everything, I'm like. Are they working together or not? I mean, I don't trust Goblin as far as I could throw him. And yeah, that was ball, that, so that was. It, well. I thought that was interesting. Yeah. The idea. So, um, uh, Willem Dafoe comes back, and he's got this dual identity, this mm-hmm. kind of schizophrenic kind of a thing going on, where he's he doesn't want to be. Um, Green Goblin. He wants to be Norman mm. Osborn again, and he goes to Aunt May for help. And I thought that was really interesting because I thought, mm. I there is an there is a real vulnerable person in there underneath the evil. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I thought that nice. that's that was cool. I liked it. Um, mm. But of course, he's going. I mean, it was the most telling. I'm usually somebody who can suspend my disbelief. Mm. I can I can forget that like okay he's probably the killer or this person's probably the you know the the one that's going to betray everybody who cares but I can suspend my disbelief enough where it doesn't affect me in any way shape or yeah. form yeah and and I just enjoy I just go with it and I just oh my god you son of a bitch you know and I, I did not see that coming and everyone will say really John you know but I just have like, that way of switching don't ruin off. it for me <laughs> just yeah. let me feel, let me feel my own feelings <laughs> yeah I have this way of just switching off and just going with the flow and yeah. I. Could not go with the flow on this one. I just knew. I just knew. And then when Aunt May, so ultimately he betrays everyone. Aunt May, um, Aunt May, and he gets the box, does he? Am I right? Or no, he doesn't. No, he doesn't actually. I thought that. Do you was know the something... box is weird. It's in and out of people's yeah. possession, yeah, and yeah, it's just yeah. like it does. It's it didn't. Yeah. It didn't really. One work. would think I mean, he the, would, but anyway, he doesn't. The, the Green Goblin turning thing. I don't think that was. I I don't think they were trying to conceal that. It was that. 
obvious. It was more like oh, yeah, okay. he, he tries to get away. You know the psychosis in him because he has to smash the mask at the start, and you're like, well, that, that isn't how you fix psychological problems by smashing a mask. <laughs> you know, there's something you know it's coming back, and uh, he mm. plays it so well. It's been twenty odd years, and he. It's yeah, yeah. the same guy, like it's the same character. He doesn't miss a beat. Like he's and he hasn't aged great. a bit. I mean, well, I, I don't know if they've, you know, they might have Luke. Maybe, Skywalker maybe, yeah. But it looked like it looked like he was just yeah, like you say, you could watch the two movies Can't back to back, yeah. and it would be the same. Yeah. Um, and the, no, the, the fight, the fight scenes as well. I mean, I I know you can make people look like they're throwing themselves into a fight, but it really looked like he was getting punched in the face over and over again and laughing about it. You know, they yeah, made yeah. him strong and terrifying as strong and terrifying as he was 20 years ago i mean he's plus he's the first um movie villain in spider-man he's number one he's public enemy number yeah, one yeah, like he's the first yeah. one so he always had to be the guy he, yeah. he had to if they're doing this whole amalgamation of the three things the, the three um uh, franchises it had to be goblin it had to be him he uh he ends up betraying um he fires a rocket or something like that into and and any uh aunt may ultimately dies and mm. before she dies she says great power with great power comes great responsibility um i feel like i love that moment by the way and that was probably the third time i was weeping in this movie like mm. i i was weeping when they didn't get accepted into college i was just like this is like th this movie is their most emotional a lot of people told me that this was a very emotional movie I didn't realize how emotionally kind of wrecked I would be by the end of this movie. Mm. Um, yeah, this was like point number three, I think, where I was like just tearing up and uh, yeah. just loved. I mean, what a great moment. It isn't like I've got this pipe sticking out of me or anything like that. You know, it wasn't any it was it was done in a very mature way mm. it's this woman who thinks come on come on let's get out of here let's get out of here and she's just trying to hide the severity of the pain she's in and she just can't do it anymore and and peter is you know he's showing how young he is still he's mm. you know i think if this had been christian bale bruce wayne looking at her he would have been like there's something wrong here if this was toby mcguire now you know looking at her he probably would have been like there's something wrong here yeah, Iron yeah, Man I mean, would have been on this in a snap, but Toby well, is like, fact, how "Come on, let's get out of here. What's wrong? Flies, oh my god, what's wrong?" You know? He flies a razor-edged glider into her kidneys. That's like it. The, yeah, the yeah. second it comes through that wall and you see her taken out, I thought, "Oh, she's dead. That's it. She's dead." And then she stands up. I'm like, hmm, "I don't know if she's going to stay up." Like that was that yeah. that that was a, a a kill shot. Like he, but it takes he, more than one. It takes more than one to get a woman like Aunt May down. Oh yeah, you know, like like I mean, that. I, that's what I loved about it. it I wasn't mean, I felt, just... I felt I felt emotional in the moment. Mm. Um, I don't think it was the most emotional, like because she's been the comic relief. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For so yeah. long, and you know that her relationship with Happy and everything is brilliant. Like it's so mm. funny. Like Happy's crying when he leaves. Like we broke up. You know, all, the whole thing is just marvelous. How Tony fancies her. He's like, you're unusually hot aunt, you know, and it's just, it's funny. Like the whole thing was funny. So, so I think sometimes when you call off a comic character, it can be, have quite a lot of emotional weight, but I didn't, I didn't feel it as much until they're on the roof of the school and the other Spider-Men, you know, okay, it goes full circle. It goes full circle and they, they say the line, you know, with great strength and power comes great responsibility and they're taught that you know Gar garfield tearing up garfield steals a lot of the scenes he's great he does um you know him tearing up about losing gwen and you know it's that for me that was the the thing because we've lost so many important characters that have come back at some point we're in a multiversal thing going on here there are people coming back who died you know, there's always a little thing with Marvel films. You're like, are they really dead? You know, quite a big mm. character. Are they dead? They were important to him. Um, until I, that I, moment, I, until that moment, I was like, oh no, okay, they've killed her off for good. Like she's gone. Yeah, but on that point, I I, I agree with you. You know, with Marvel characters, even when they're even when you see them die, they they can still find mm. a way to come back. Gamora, for example, in Guardians. Um, mm. I'm waiting for the day when Scarlett Johansson's character 
uh, Romanov finds a way back. Like I just yeah. don't, I, I've refused to accept that she's gone, you know, from the, mm. that, we, that we'll never see Scarlett Johansson in a movie again, you know? Um, but what about the, Stark though? What is it stuck? Cause that's a different thing. Iron no, Man. But the, the, the they thing could, is they could have that, brought him back in this. They could have brought him into this, but they didn't. Yeah, they, they could have. Yeah. No, but I, I do think, no, no, but I look, I, I'm not so cynical to say that, oh, well, they're all going to come back at some point, but I do think, yeah, when somebody dies, I do think to myself, I may see that actor again, but yeah. I, n- but I still feel the weight of the death in the moment. I still feel like mm. there is a shift here and they really communicate that well, as you said, with all the Spider-Men just standing around, sharing their grief. No one's ever understood that. They've never been able to tell anybody. The only people that they can talk to are themselves. And that mm. is that was a really heavy moment. I think that was point number four when I started crying. Um, <laughs> like it just this movie was just a roller coaster of just emotions for me. Um, and then they all kind of work together then to create cures for the villains. Mm. And then they lure them out to the Statue of Liberty, which is under construction because they're putting a shield up which I thought was cool. Uh, look, I don't think it has the same iconic look but uh, as the torch, but um, yeah. I thought, you know what? Yeah, uh, I, less, I didn't hate it. Less French, I think, to have the American shield. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. They've definitely re, re, uh, re, rebranded. Uh, I guess, yeah, rebranded the Statue of Liberty, yeah. Um, but the... Yeah, they have this big showdown. Um, Green Goblin is now Hobgoblin. He's got the purple hoodie that's been tattered, which I thought was a very a nice little transition from costumes. Yeah. Um, I did enjoy that. And yeah, they just have their big showdown. And to me, the real masterstroke of that whole climactic action sequence was Andrew Garfield saves MJ from falling. Mm. And, and he kind of, he yeah, tears great. up as he saves. Like he, he never got to save Gwen. And now he saves MJ. And it felt the like same he, fall as well. The same save. Like it's the same. Yeah. yeah. And he can yeah. now he can sleep better at night. And I thought yeah. that's he might not sleep totally perfectly every night, but he can sleep well. He can sleep better. Well, um, you know, he's he's probably it sounds like he's not sleeping that well anyway. It sounds like he's become a, a, a brutal <laughs> version of spider-man that kills yeah. people but you know we yeah. don't go into that too much but he he touches on it he says you know i've become a bit of a monster effectively i've stopped pulling my punches and yeah you know, yeah yeah you know it's it changed him and uh it it, it with that uh, those arcs connecting you wonder how may dying and losing everything that he's got is going to affect him particularly as he's now you know he's, uh, he's alone completely alone and it's you know he doesn't have the stark play? tech anymore either um mm. if if I'm, uh, I'm not mistaken he, he doesn't it's, no, it's all gone it's all yeah, good. but it's i think he's does the suit get just he gets a bit wrecked in the last scene but yeah yeah, yeah. but, 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 but at the, so at the very end he goes to to so all of the different multiverses are starting to collide there's a problem mm. now um strange is going to try and have to rectify everything and there is a way to solve it which is just nobody knows who Spider-Man is. Nobody knows who I am, who Peter Parker, oh, Peter is. Parker nobody, is. Yeah, yeah Nobody yeah. knows who Peter Parker is. Just cast a spell that everybody in the world has forgotten about me. Everybody in the universe has forgotten about me. Hmm. And he does. And Strange tells him, if you do this, everyone who ever loved you, we will not remember you, which I thought hmm. was a very important kind of phrasing that he says, we like we Stephen. all care but everybody cares for you <laughs> and we're all going to we're never going to remember you. He makes the decision, he makes the sacrifice. He says goodbye to everybody and then the spell is cast. And the next time we see Peter, he's at Aunt May's grave. Mm. I think that's the next time we see him. And then Happy yep. comes over and he says, "How did you know her?" And it broke my heart. Yeah. Yeah, I mean it's their relationship. It's a heavy it's a heavy line. How did you know her? <gasps> Because even Aunt May wouldn't know who he is if she was alive. He became like a bumbling Uncle Ben to mm. Peter as well. Like he, yeah. you know, he, he, I think he was the greatest role model. You know, he's quite bumbling, but he was solid. You know, he was honest. Yeah. I had and, a theory. I had a theory that, sorry, I had a theory at one point. I wasn't sure if they'd ever mentioned Uncle Ben in Homecoming. Okay. And I wasn't sure if they ever mentioned Ben. 
as a character in Civil War Homecoming at that point. And I said to myself, I bet you Happy's real name is Ben. And he'll die and he'll could say with great power goes graves comes great responsibility. And it'll be Oh my God, he's Uncle Ben. You know, he just never married. Yeah. You know, and I just I, I wasn't sure if they had ever done that, but it, in my there was a moment where I had this theory, and yeah. then and I love the idea that it was Aunt May that gives the guidance instead. I just thought, yeah, sorry, yeah, sorry, yeah. Sorry, it's, it's, it's very. I think it's very poignant that they did yeah. that. I mean, we've yeah, already yeah. done the dead happy, not dead happy in uh, Iron Man three. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I don't, I don't know. We could have, no, of course we could have done it. You can kill people about 25 times yeah, in the yeah, MCU, can't you? It's fine. That, yeah. it's fine. Um, but yeah, I think that we, we didn't really get, there was very brief touches of it in this this Spider-Man about the Uncle Ben thing. You know, I think in Homecoming, there's a, dis- a discussion about the trauma that Aunt May's been through. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't say Uncle Ben. Is there a briefcase with uh, uh, an yeah. insignia on it? In in uh, I kind of ditched my theory in in after yeah. I think Far From Home because you you know then it's not but but you, is, they never discuss it surely they no. would have discussed it it's it's just it's almost like it just doesn't exist in this universe but and I I, 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 yeah. I like the fact that they've gone okay each universe is different the same characters might be there they look different but th- there's still some cycle so there's a chance there is or will be or would have been an Uncle Ben maybe he's mm. still alive and he left you know we don't we don't know. He could have been the guy that ran away, we, we, and he wasn't the the, the cool uncle. Um, on, on that though, the the Jameson, Jameson's the same guy. Yeah. So that of course they didn't. He wasn't in Amazing Spider Man. He was he was there, but you never saw him. They didn't cast the guy. I guess my reading of it would be that you can have like maybe Peter's parents in the Tobey Maguire universe were different people who, you know, they, that you can still arrive at, my name is Peter Parker Mm. and I have been raised in a certain way and all the kind of the, all the signposts for his life are the same, but his family genes could be totally different to say Mm. that, you know, I get the feeling it was Uncle Ben and Aunt May that made sure he did well in school. Yeah. Which is a constant through all of their lives, you know, all mm. of the different versions. Um, I did think, you know, for example, like, why aren't all the spy, why aren't all the to- Peter, uh, why aren't all the Peter Parkers the same? And I was thinking, actually, maybe it's just a simple case of my parents don't look like your parents, you know, mm. and, and I don't know. Um, I, uh, the parents yeah, things. Yeah. The parents things interesting as well because the, we were talking about the grief that hasn't been in the Tom Holland mm. version, and they don't really. There's no parent stuff at all. He's just mm. living with his auntie May. I mean, they might, they might still be alive. I mean, in the in the in the Maguire and the Garfield, yeah. they're referenced. You know, there's the there's the clash with Ben. I think in both of them, you're not my father, mm. and you know that that you know, that was your dad's stuff. You know, there's all this kind of, you know, backstory of him, you know, never really having a mum and dad. Whereas in the Tom Holland, it's not. It's like cool kid living in New York with his cool auntie who's a lot younger. Yeah. And it's like, they did, they avoided that. And I think they've grown, as we said, they've grown his emotional arc like tremendously yeah. from what was quite a happy-go-lucky thing. Obviously, he's been through the, the trauma of uh, Infinity War. And it's just, they've really done it cleverly, particularly when they didn't know when the last one was going to be. They still don't now. But th- that I just think they've been so smart with that character um, and just being able to cross-reference it against the other ones in this film is just, it's wonderful because you can see that they're all very different. Their lives have been different, but there are threads of them that match. And it's the, it's almost like they are, they're all going to have the same fate. Mm. It's like fate runs through Spider Man in the same way. It's going to be the same at some point. It might not be straight away. It might be very early, but they're going to have the same fate of being having to be alone. And that is going that's going to happen. And it's now happening to this this Spider Man. And it's it's there's something quite grounding about that idea in a film that is pretty crazy. Like, you know, you've got many multiverses, many universes clashing together and 
dead people from other universes coming into this one and they all seemingly know each other. And it's just to have a thread like that where all three universes having the same thread really grounds it. I think the structure of it particularly uh, has has been grounded and it's it's so smart how they've done it. Mm. Um, on the subject, you talked about his character arc. On the subject of that, I wanted to talk about the structure of the story overall because... I think that I, I'm, you know, I know I was critical of the the idea of the the MacGuffin and the plot, uh, you know, mm. let's protect this box and not press the button, even though that would solve everything. You know, it's kind of a bit weird. Let's try and make everybody good again. But I I I think you can really teach screenwriting from this movie. I think structurally, this is a really really solid superhero movie with a great A story and a great B story. A story, we're try- Peter Parker's got to solve the the crisis. Um, B story, he's got to, I think, come full circle in terms of the emotional weight of what his role is. You know, he's always enjoyed being Spider-Man. It's always fun to be Spider-Man. It's always fun to be able to jump in and join up with the Avengers and, you know, do it as a team. Mm. But this was a case where, you know, he took on the responsibility of all of these villains by himself He's following the teachings of Aunt May. There are people telling him this is a bad idea. There are people getting in his ear telling him this isn't possible. The villains mainly, uh, Strange as well and so on. Um, And then Aunt May dies and she tells him with great power comes great responsibility. And that is almost like the, it's like the, the, the need coming to the surface. It's that, it's that this is the lesson you need to learn. Mm. Um, Will you be able to do the right thing later when the time comes? Will you be able to accept that responsibility? Yeah. Um, and for me, that responsibility is, will I be able to sacrifice every, my relationships with everybody for the greater good? Yes. I'm not just doing this for me. I'm not just doing this for people I love. I'm doing this. I'm Spider-Man for the good of everybody. And in order for everybody to be safe, I'm going to have to make a sacrifice. Very few superheroes make sacrifices. I'm going to go off on a bit of a rant here, right? But I love this. I really love this ending. The last time I saw a real meaningful sacrifice that wasn't Iron Man snapping his fingers um, was Batman in the Dark Knight. It's mm. great for Bruce Wayne, the billionaire trained by ninjas to be able to dress up and drive around the tank and scare the hell out of villains when you're, when, you know, and Batman is not indestructible, but he is so overpowered that he is in many ways over, indestructible. Mm. Um, he's not as indestructible as Superman. And I think it's very, very hard for characters like Superman or even Iron Man to make real sacrifices mm. when... They're so overpowered, either through genius or through, you know, ability, like physical ability. Um, But there's always a way to get out of that. There's always a way to find your way out of it, you know. Um, With Batman at the end of The Dark Knight, when he says, no, I did these things. And then Gordon says, but they'll hunt you. And he says, no, you'll hunt me. That's the point. That's the line yeah. for me. It's not, it's not when he says, no, I did this. Like that's when the music cues up mm. when he says, I did this. And the music shifts and the whole audience goes, oh, he's going to take the fall for Harvey Dent, mm. right? He's like, they need me to be this. The city yeah. needs me to be this and I can but it's, take it. But it's when Gordon says, but they'll hunt you. And he says, no, you'll hunt me. It's, mm. we have to sever this relationship now. And he's, he's making real personal sacrifices now in order to he's losing his ally here in order to, for the greater good and the the only other time i've seen this in a superhero movie unless i'm remembering incorrectly is this movie now spider-man no way home he's he sacrifices his relationships with everybody to start from scratch for the greater good and mm. if spider-man is about a boy becoming a man if it's about boyhood into manhood, if it's about high school student trying to get into college, if it's about, you know, 
delivering pizzas to pay the bills in a grun- grimy apartment, which may be the same apartment from Spider-Man 2, I don't know. Um, you've got to have that emotional maturity at, at its end. And for me, that is... That is this, and this is yeah. one of the best endings to any superhero movie I've ever seen. That's my I, rant. I, th- I think the yes, I, I, I mean the, the the whole scene in the cafe is yeah. heart, heartbreaking. You know, you, you see, it, 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 there was that something was of Toby... the sixth time I cried. Yeah, go on. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> there yeah. was something of Toby Maguire in it. I don't know if it's him hopping down the street with a plan or something, but you know, there was there was something a very universal about that scene um and i thought you're it really tugged at your heartstrings because you know what they've all been through together not just in this film but in all the other films um you know the fact that ned's becoming something else mm. you know he could finally be getting out the not the guy in the chair anymore he's he could be coming a, a, a uh, all powerful wizard yeah. <laughs> could, or hobgoblin as it would do in the comics but the um it's there's something about it where you you kind of know the second he walks in the door and it shows them hanging out at the at the bar and Ned's got his donut and all that kind of stuff and he looks at them really wistfully and with the you can see the he's, he's really good at that look the puppy dog luck and he's got that love and you can just see in that moment you you don't want it to be so you don't allow yourself to feel that but I think everyone kind of gets the impression where it's going you know it's like oh is this really going to happen? No, he's, he can't because they'll be in danger. And, you know, when she ta- pulls her hair back and there's the, the Band-Aid, mm. and that's the moment for him. But I think as an audience, you probably emotionally feel that just before it happens, which is so well written. I mean, the whole structure of the film is so well written. So, oh, yeah. so the ending works so well. So I, I, yeah, I think he- if you... He has a piece of paper, he's got a prepared speech, yeah. and then he pockets the speech and just says, thanks for the coffee is, or whatever it is. is. Yeah. And he's gone. And she, you know, she, I think there's a weird thing that she, she kind of feels something, but she doesn't know what it is. Hmm. You know, it, it goes on, it, go, it goes through that thing. Like, uh, I think it's a, uh, in, um, interstellar, like love is love uh, transcends everything kind of thing. It's like, really? Isn't it aliens that transcend everything? But you know, there's this whole th- thing that love can transcend everything. So she doesn't know who he is, but there's still there's a, a connection, connection between them. There's something, um, and yeah. The, the, their, their their story has been tremendously soon in because there's barely anything between them, really, in the first yeah. film. You know, they're they're just yeah. friends, and, and it doesn't she, really happen until the end. And it's like, oh, she, when yeah. she says, "I'm MJ," you're like, ah, oh, okay, I get, I get what's going to happen between these two now. Um, but just the casting and everything, it wasn't necessarily definitely going to be her. Yeah, it was just really clever how they've done that arc. But I mean, the, the whole to have that ending, you needed the structure of the film. It wouldn't have, it would have fell flat if you didn't have all of the, you know, the things lined up in the right way. It's quite a complex film, mm. but I think if you take all of those bells and whistles off it and just leave the structure, it could have been Spielberg or Lucas in like the yep. '90s and the '80s. You know, those classic. Yep. Indiana Jones and Close Encounters, and there is a really strong structure. They have the problem up front. You know, they they dis- decide, they figure out what the plan is. They try and get through it. There's a massive rug pull in the middle. They question their own. They question themselves. Um, there's a point of no return, and then victory and redemption. And it's like, there. Okay, it's all it's all there. It's complex, but if you if you look at it, it's all there. And they all need to be. They, they all need one another to work and they're all there and they've really, the writing in it is tight. It's really tight. One of the things that I, yeah, I, it's, it's so tight, but it, but that structure, I think they've evolved that structure. Uh, like for me, I think the difference, I'm not saying this kind of, you know, out like that this is outright kind of definite here, but it's to me, what I, the difference I see between like that structure of the past, as you've described and the structure now is that, they just reinforce the endings a little bit more, or they will reinforce mm. those kind of turning points just a little bit more. That I always say, like, if you want to write a great climax to your film, break it up, have it, have it, ha- you should almost have three climaxes. You know, like again, mm. in, in The Dark Knight, you've got Batman versus Joker, this, the, the, the people of Gotham on the ferries, and you've then got the showdown with Two Face. Mm. And it's, it's, 
it's not enough just to have that one showdown in order to prove that Batman has passed his test or whatever it is that you're trying to say. Mm. It's, you know, and even Joker says it in that movie where he says, you didn't think I'd risk the soul for Gotham in a fist fight against Batman, did you? You know, which is such a line because it's a like, yes, you really understand that this cannot just be decided through one victory. And mm. most character lessons tend to be kind of just handed like the victories tend to be handed to the the heroes after a single victory Mm. um and we're seeing now more and more where characters are having to really fight again and again for their victories and if the emotional if the if the if the the moment we applaud spider-man is when he decides to sacrifice himself so to speak or his identity so to Mm. speak for the greater good and says right nobody knows who i am anymore then the the reinforcement of that is when he puts the letter in the pocket because as i was as he was making that sacrifice i was saying to myself okay but if their love is true which presumably it is presumably she's not just in it for spider-man obviously um then he should in theory be able to win her over again Mm. if it's true love he should be able to win her over again and i always and when i was watching no way home i thought yeah this is going to be a tough sacrifice for like the Avengers. It's going to be a tough sacrifice for, you know, you know, things like that. But if he's such a good guy and if Ned is such a good guy, surely they can become best friends again. Mm -hmm. And surely he can say, look, if you trust me, trust me when I say this is the life we had before. And, and maybe the same thing could happen with MJ, Mm -hmm. but he had the maturity to know it isn't just a panic. It isn't just a moment of panic with strange where, okay, look, just make everybody forget who I am. This was something that even after all the dust had settled and he had an opportunity to attempt uh, a sort of a, a, mm. a, a retcon, he opted against it. And yes. I just was like, yes, you are dark Knight levels of superhero in my book now. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, 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 I just know. think the way the way they did it and the attention they gave it. That scene didn't have to be that long, but it did. It did have to be that long, really. Like uh, fr- from what they've been through, that could have been a quick thing. He could have looked at her through a window and gone, "No, I'm not going to do it." But there was a th- they it, they they did it well. Um, and now you know you know that there's a looseness to it as well because if if you think about what's happened, they've removed him from history, so. Well, there's no way they're ever going to go back into this, but ha- what happened on Titan? No, but you, isn't, you know, you know, all of these things like what happened on Titan? No, like, but isn't the idea that, uh, cause I thought that, but then I was thinking, no, isn't the idea that it's just, nobody knows who Peter Parker is anymore, but Spider-Man still exists. But he was both. He's, he's, his mask was off. Like I know, I know for like okay, okay. 10 people, but like who, was he replaced? He must have been replaced. There must have been someone else. It was different. Could could they have ruined the room? What happened in that? Could they have lost the Infinity War? Like you do, you know what? Maybe, do, maybe, do we, maybe this isn't a well written film. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, there's a, the, I think there's a looseness to it that you allow as a viewer. You're like, okay, he's just been retconned. You know, the that his existence has been removed, mm. but the time. You know what? Why? What? You know, maybe the spell sure. made space for that. You know, there's a looseness to it that that allows you. Yeah, but you know to what? I, which... You know what I would say is, if this was Eternals, I would have no forgiveness for that, <laughs> right? And there are other movies where I'd be like, nope, I'm not. Sp- I'm not showing any any mercy here. You guys should have known better. Yeah. What yeah. does it say about our love of this character, this version of this character, that yeah. that we're actually just prepared to go with it? But I mean, it. You know? we, it it wasn't just him though, was it? We had the, all three of them. Mm. It was and the, the the you know, the chemistry between them was just incredible. Like yeah. absolutely incredible. All of the Easter eggs and the callbacks and everything. Even like the the meta stuff like okay. Toby Maguire's back and things like that. It's I you know, I, he uh, he nearly lost that role to weirdly to Jake Gyllenhaal. They nearly recast him. So I'm gonna say something here. I I thought they missed out on a very, very obvious beat. Go on. What was it? So at some point through the movie, Jamie Foxx talks about how there should be a black Spider-Man. Okay. Yeah. 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 Miles Morales. Right. Yeah. If you've ever, you know, 
into the Spider-Verse, right? And the video games and all that. Can't wait to see what they do with this. In Spider-Man Homecoming, Donald Glover plays Miles Morales' uncle. Mm. We don't see Miles Morales, but Donald Glover plays his uncle. And he never makes another appearance. It's just like a cameo. And it's a bit of a strange cameo because we never, ever see him again. If he was a recurring character in all three movies, just there in the neighborhood, that's fine. But he's not. He's just there in that one. And I I thought, okay, you've given me Tobey Maguire, you've given me Andrew Garfield at the midpoint of this movie. You haven't, you need to give me one more. If this is Marvel, if this is Kevin Feige, if this is like, you're going to give me that one big payoff at the very end, Mm. right? And I thought, Donald Glover from an alternate reality as as the Miles Morales version of that character. It might not be Miles Morales, but he is Morales who comes in and... And just is that last saving grace. And now you've brought yeah. Miles Morales in in the, in the MCU version. You've satisfied the curiosity of the yeah. audience that Jamie Foxx's character has inspired. Because, yeah, you're like, yeah, now I want Miles Morales. You can't yeah. have all of them without me- mentioning Miles. One of, like, Into the Spider-Verse is, for many, their favorite Spider-Man movie. For some, it's the best Spider-Man movie ever made. Now, I don't know yeah. how you bring the animated version into this. But you, you did bring Donald Glover into this movie, into this series yeah. at one point. And I thought I mean, that Don, was... Donald that Glover was the, should be the... Is it the, the Prowler? Yeah, yeah. I know he would have been yeah, the Prowler yeah. in this universe. But yeah. I thought, you've got a moment here where you can just have him yeah. be Miles Morales. Or, yeah. you know, a version of that. With no questions asked. Yeah. And people would have lost their minds. And Absolutely. it would have made a hell of a lot more money on top of that, I'd say. I mean, I mean, um, there is, you know. there is, there are sort of curses of having a successful movie that could be a franchise. So, yeah, it's its own thing. Like the X Men was its own thing until the X Men wasn't as popular. They weren't in the MCU. Yeah. Now they are going to be. They're going to make it into the MCU eventually. Um, we're going to see a little bit of some weird thing going on in spoilers but this is in the uh the trailer yeah, yeah, in the trailer universe of, uh, you know in um, multiverse of madness you know we've got we've got patrick stewart there like it's 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 going to be xavier and he's going to be on on the um i forget the name of the the group he's going to be on the the board of directors for that <laughs> superhero yeah. group. <laughs> completely forgot the name of them but you know we, we're going to get mutants in the mcu and that didn't happen until it ran its course and it had a big course to run mm. like it we went through two iterations of it that ended up being mixing together and it was great but now you know jackman might not play wolverine again it's kind of, he was he was the guy that held it together it was him and patrick stewart really that you know they're gonna bring them over while spider-verse is big i mean it was in the oscars you know this second one looks incredible you know it looks a bit dr strangey what they're going with here um and until that is done, we're not going to see a live action Morales, no matter how much we want it. It's yeah, not going to happen. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> okay, last point before we have to wrap up. Um, why does Venom know? So at the end of the post credit sequence, Venom is, Tom Hardy is sitting in a bar trying to piece together everything, trying to figure everything out. He's like, what do you mean Thanos? What do you mean these these gems and or these stones and all that kind of stuff. And there's this barman explaining everything to him. The guy from Ted Lasso, football is life. Yeah. Yeah, Um, yeah. And, uh, and then he just disappears. He gets sucked back into his reality again, because obviously strange has done his thing. And a little bit of venom stays on the bar. Mm. And it's like, okay, venom is now in this universe. How did Tom Hardy know who Peter Parker was? Because that's the idea, isn't it? So I think, I've, lo- I've, I've, yeah. As soon as I saw it, I was like, "What?" I yeah. think there was a thing. There was something on the TV in an environment. I can't remember where it is. There is something on a TV about Spider-Man doing something in the Venom universe. It do- it's not implicit. It's in the background. But th- I, I think it's beyond that. It's the the guy at the mm. bar, whoever he is, has been trying to tell the person what's been going on. Venom's been listening to it. We don't know how long he's been there. Mm. You know, they don't belong to that universe. Is does does Venom Venom's not drunk. Tom Hardy's the drunk one. Yeah. Like has he been told in this in this conversation? 
Is this pre? No, no. But how would he have gotten in there? Because pure, because assuming he was transported into this world just like everybody else, how did he? Like he was transported in with Andrew Garfield, for example, and those guys. Yeah. But how did he? What was his ticket to get into this world? Because so, you have to, you have to have known the identity of Spider Man. Again, it's so muddy. Yeah. That you, it's not clear how mm. he knows that, but it's not clear that it's not entirely certain that he wouldn't know that. There is probably, uh, yeah, okay. you know, we we haven't we haven't explored Spider Man in the Venom universe yet, but it yeah. doesn't mean he doesn't exist in the comic books. Venom didn't look like Venom until the symbiote took over Spider Man. Yeah, like that's why he looks like Spider Man because he was the first person that, or, or one of the first people that he infected with power, and he was like, okay, and Sp- Spider Man wore that suit for a while. Until he he started he started taking over him, and you know it was a it was about the black suit before it became about the monster, and you know there's there's this weird relationship between Spider Man and Venom that wasn't really really yeah. found in well I, I guess they did do it they did it in Spider Man three but it was just weird how they did it they haven't done it in Venom mm. you know but they haven't not done it you know we don't know what they know yeah yeah I'm maybe. sure. I'm sure Scene in Venom that See, allows I that. I hadn't seen the second Venom yeah. film. Uh, I enjoyed the first Venom movie a lot, actually, and I really, yeah. I am going to see the second one eventually. But I just never got around to it. And uh, but I wondered, did I miss something in that film? Um, but anyway. I, I think, I think it's the. It might be the second one. It might, they, be, it'd be nice if they more. did. It'd be nice if they did a third film that segues nicely into No Way Home, uh, or you know, the, a little bit of a information that just suddenly changes now the course of mm. I don't know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Final thoughts. Great film. Uh, great film. Like like you say, it's it could be in a screenwriting lecture. It, the structure of it is tight. The writing of it is tight. It has literally been a twenty year arc, really. If you mm. if you include the the Maguire films all the way through the Garfield films, 20 year arc, you know, it was a punching the air. People in the cinema were screaming. Like there was like a mob mentality about, Oh my God, look, they're back. I haven't experienced that in a long, long, long time. You know, that, that, that roller coaster ride of a film, you know, end game maybe, but it's, it hasn't happened in a long time. And for, for it to do it now when everyone needs, to be brought back together and it, the timing was perfect we've all been apart we've all been in our little hide, covid hidey holes and for it to come out on the cusp of the recovery is it was just a wonderful thing and now the people haven't seen it few of them you know everyone saw this film but the people who haven't seen it are going to get to watch it at home now and people you know yeah i want to rewatch this thing again and again like there's gonna be so much I didn't get on the first one on the first viewing and I want to see it again and again. It's a great. Film. I cried too many times. I can't, I can't afford to watch this again. Like I'll have to <laughs> hydrate. You need I mean, to, you need to hydrate yeah, in, no, yeah. in the, in the, in the watching. Just, this is just, get uh, one of those, those foam dome hats <laughs> with a, the two straws. <laughs> thanks very much, Brad. Uh, always a pleasure. Um, thanks very much for listening guys. Uh, you can always check us out on our website, scriptdepartment.net for all the uh, latest stuff we're getting up to. You can follow us on social media, links in the description, and subscribe to the podcast for more episodes like this. Uh, Just search for The Script Department wherever you get your podcasts. Give the video a like, subscribe to the YouTube channel, be kind. Uh, Thanks very much, everyone.